Welcome back to another episode of Generally Assembled, your favorite House Republican podcast, despite some other people's beliefs. Uh, I'm Jason Gottis, been once again joined by Representative Jesse Topper, uh, Bedford, Fulton Counties. Uh, you got a milkshake there. Yeah, um, the, the PA Dairyman's Association. I don't really like milkshakes. I'm just doing this to support the agriculture uh, in Pennsylvania, the, the agroeconomy. Uh, mm-hmm. This was very difficult for me, honestly, to get down. Um, but the things I do for Pennsylvania, you know, I'm willing to give it a shot. Would you have another one if you had to? If I had to. You know, yeah. Jason, if I had to. Um, I would probably – this was this was a mix, uh, vanilla and chocolate, the half and half. And I really think that um, if I had to do it again, I would. But, cool. you know, I just, I just want uh, Pennsylvania to realize that uh, we have a strong – agriculture economy our our dairymen need your support and i did my best to support them today so thank you thank you pennsylvania's dairy industry representative topper what you're saying is that these milkshakes definitely do bring all the reps to the capital <laughs> so uh yeah <laughs> supporting <laughs> pennsylvania ag uh, well, the Dairymen, uh, their milkshake is uh, famous from the farm show. Yep. And uh, the farm show is uh, in January, and we're r- rapidly approaching um, <laughs> the last half of the year where the farm show is going to be uh, quickly in the, the – uh, They're probably playing – I mean, they the plan that out a yeah, year in advance. Yes, they do. And um, so – Truly, listen, I, and I say this with all – I mean, I'm joking about the milkshakes. Because everybody know I love milkshakes. But, but in all seriousness, the farm show, if you've never had a chance to attend, it is, it is truly a great – exhibition for Pennsylvania yeah I, I think um, whether you're whether you're you have kids whether you don't have kids it doesn't really you know you there there are so many neat things uh, to see and learn about um, and, and and I think I think it's it's one of the showcases of Pennsylvania I really do well you know uh, in case anybody nobody's told you before agriculture is the number one industry yes in Pennsylvania. yes yeah um, all right so uh, rapidly approaching the end of the first half of the year uh, which means that we are rapidly approaching the beginning of a new year, a new fiscal year. Uh, but we are recording this here on Thursday, June 27th. Uh, budget negotiations, uh, to the best of our understanding, continue. No final product has been reached, and uh, work continues to get uh, corresponding legislation done. But as we sit here and we speak using capital terms and legislative talk, um, a lot of folks out there who, when they get in these predicaments, don't necessarily know the process. They get a lot of words dumped on them process that's discussed by members when they're going back home um, and it's all very uh, arcane and inside baseball as to why this doesn't get done so um, you know I know you spent a lot of time on the appropriations committee in your career um, you know you've been a part of you know the process so it's not just a budget right so look that is the number one question you get why why is this such a big deal every year you know and, and it's because there are a couple things that have to be established and 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 this is where you have to negotiate so the you have the governor and you have the senate and you have the house and of course within the senate and the house you have republicans and democrats two parties so all of those parties five you know are in rooms coming up with the first thing you have to establish is how much money are we going to spend mm mm-hmm. mhm Right. What is our final? Yeah, that's spend where the process be? really. Yeah, that's the first agreement you need to come. It's to. The first agreement you need to come to is how much are we going to spend? Well, mm-hmm. that's a very difficult agreement to come to, right. um, because everybody doesn't see that the same way. You know, we we, we have seen a budget that has grown billions of dollars. Um, I mean, from from the time I started, probably almost thirty billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've seen the the growth of of government. And, and the growth of spending, because that's really what it does. That also grows programming. So when you first have to decide on that spend number, you then work backwards from there. Okay, well, this is, this is the amount we're going to agree upon. Well, how are all these dollars going to be driven out? Where the dollars go, how they get there, um, including the, the tax code, which determines what the revenue number is going to be. So we can predict how much money we're going to take in as a government, but if we decide that we're going to spend more than that, well, that's going to affect whether we have to raise taxes, or that's going to affect whether we have to raise fees. Or if we decide that we're going to spend less than what's coming in, well, what do we do with that that extra money, right? Um, so, so the first thing established is how much are we going to spend, and, and that part is is a, a very difficult piece to come uh, to come up with an agreement. And then after that, you have these things called code bills, and and what all the code code bills are, it's it's a 
Think of taking a bunch of bills that you've passed throughout the year mm -hmm. and putting them into one. So if, you, if you've if you passed 20 bills relating to education out of the House and 20 out of the Senate, a lot of times what the code bill is is they take one of those bills, put the language of some of the other bills into that, and that determines the policy, right? And then with that policy, does that require more money? Well, is that part of the spend number? So you're trying to match well, also all of further these direction things. As That's well. right. Yeah. All, all these things at one time. And then, of course, like we talked about the tax code. I'll give you an, an example of one of my bills, which is to eliminate the accelerated sales tax. In Pennsylvania, our businesses, thanks to a, an act in 2009 uh, in the Rendell administration, when um, we were about to, Pennsylvania was had an impending budget crisis. So the Governor Rendell and the legislature decided they wanted to get some of their tax revenue early. Mm -hmm. So they had businesses essentially submit taxes based on what they thought they were going to sell. sell. So right. that's why it's called an accelerated sales tax. Well, we that, that was something that was only supposed to be a one-year kind of quick cash grab budget gimmick, if you will. It's not needed anymore, and yet we still have it, as mm -hmm. so many times happens with state government. It is a huge burden on our businesses, particularly our small businesses, to try and guess what they're going to have in terms of revenue and, and pay the tax on that. And if they're short, they're penalized. If they're over, it's hard to get their money back. All the paperwork that's involved, it's, it's really a nightmare for businesses. So this is a bill that I'm hoping to have part of our tax code discussion. It might not pass as itself as a bill, but maybe the language in it will pass as part of an overall tax code, right. as part of the picture of the money that we're bringing in or, or putting out. When you think of an almost $50 billion budget and all of those policy pieces, all of the bills that have been passed back and forth but haven't become law but still could be in the mix to become law through this – all of that happening in this kind of a time frame, that's what puts the pressure on the deadline. Sure. It's never just because if one of those, it's, it's, like, uh, it's like Jenga. You know, if you pull one of those pieces out, even if it's, even if it's a seemingly small piece, but it means a lot to three senators mm -hmm. and they were going to vote, you know, be the deciding votes in the budget, and you pull that piece out, that could bring the whole, the whole game down. Um, and that's why that's why it's so difficult because you have all of these parties and, and individuals involved representing their constituents, and all these. It's not just as simple as oh, how much money do we have? How much are we going to spend? Oh, figure it out like like your home budget. There are all these policy pieces in place as well because we can all agree maybe to spend let's say five hundred million dollars in education, but where does the rub come in? How do we spend the money? Mm -hmm. You know, we want it to be spent on things that go directly into the classroom, the academic, the, you know, the science of reading, uh, making sure that, that we're providing our schools with what they need to help the students achieve academically. So, so what are the parameters around that? Um, th those are, we want to make sure it's going towards clearing the CT, uh, CTE waiting lists, our career tech education waiting lists around. Like we want to make sure there's money specifically designed for that. Whereas, you know, there are those on the other side who just want to throw the money out and say, hey, guys, spend it however you want. And, and there are th those are the kinds of policy discussions that really affect the outcome of, of this budget, and that's, that's what we're involved with right now. So um, I did that. You know, hopefully that, that will help uh, educate on, on this process and why it's so complicated, and also hopefully a shameless plug for making sure that that accelerate, elimination of the accelerated sales tax gets in somewhere. Well, yeah, I, and, and uh, certainly that's something that would help our small businesses and things that we something we've been talking about now for several sessions. And I think we passed it out of the House once. We uh, passed it before. last session yeah. uh, unanimously yep. out of the Finance Committee and the House. Yeah. So, but I think we can almost even simplify it even more. And I like, when I was a reporter, I used to use a metaphor. Um, simile metaphor. Yeah, metaphor. Doing a budget is a lot like planning a family vacation. Okay, you know you want to go on that vacation around June 30th, okay? So the first thing you need to decide is, so is a spend number, right? That's like where you're going. You can't decide anything else until you know where you're going. So then everything else fills in. You have uh, the fiscal code, which is like the direction or the route you're going to take is how you get there, right? And then you also have other vehicle bills. So you have the tax code. That's like your job. That's how you pay for it. You have a budget, but maybe we need more than we had last year. Maybe we need things. So you need to change how you're going to pay for it. That's like your job, how you pay for it. Um, you have the administrative code bill. Sometimes it goes along with it. It's like the car you're going to take. Uh, or and plane. The, and the specifics. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so it's it's exactly right. So, well, are we going to stop and see uh, Grandma on the way? Are we going to stop and see this? Are we going to stop and go uh, to to, uh, to to friendlies? Uh, are we staying at a hotel? Then what does that do to the overall budget? So it's it's all of those many component parts, any one of which, if there's no agreement on, can totally derail the vacation or at least delay it until later in the summer. Um, you know, that's that's always how I viewed it, right? There's the component and I'm gonna t- parts. Let, let's, let's move on. So yeah. that, that, I love this, by the way. Yeah. I was really hoping it would stink so that I could make <laughs> fun of your analogy, but I actually like this, and now I can work with it even, even more. So, yeah. and, and the other thing that happens, as happens with every family vacation and how, you know, what, what goes on, especially this last week of the budget process is, what do you do when things come up during the vacation that throws you in a loop? So your car breaks down. Mm-hmm. That was not anticipated. You know? And so what happens when a senator comes in and says, you know what? I want my district to get this all of a sudden out of nowhere. When you've, all, you've done all the planning or, um, you know, all of a sudden the, there's a, the governor's office comes out with, well, we, we've changed our mind on, the, okay, maybe a road shuts down. You realize, oh, a flight gets canceled, which we see a lot now. So what happens in those moments mm-hmm. is what we see during last last week. This last right. week, there are flights getting canceled, there are detours, there are cars breaking down, there are kids throwing up in the back seat. Things that you that you, as best you plan for and as best you budget for, things that come up right. during this long trip, and um, you know, and, and now you got to make some decisions, right? Uh, do right. we do we turn around, go home, start over? Do we say, you know what, we can keep driving with the throw up in the back seat? Do we say we're going to find another flight, or now we're going to get a car and drive? You got to. So a lot of it you've planned to get to this point over the last couple months. Now the things are happening that make you make those decisions because at some point, and and this is this is where we all are when we vote on a final product. Mm-hmm. I have never voted for a code bill. And I've never voted for a budget where I like 100% of the stuff that's in there. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Yep. So what you start measuring is, all right, this code bill is now in front of me. It's got some stuff I like. It's got some stuff I don't. So now I have to weigh if the stuff that I don't like outweighs, in my opinion, for the good of the Commonwealth and the good of my district, mm-hmm. the stuff I do like. Right. And then that's why I'm a, that, that might be where I'm a no. Or the other way around. Okay, I've seen now that... Yeah, those two things I don't like, but at the end of the day, there's so much in here that I think moves us forward. I'm a yes. You don't have to make that decision normally on just a random bill in March. Mm-hmm. You know, when a bill comes to the House, it's pretty much like, do I like it or not? But with these code bills, which have a lot of bills within them, mm-hmm. and and with a budget that has all the money attached to it, you have to make decisions on is it does the good outweigh the bad in your mind? Right. Well, yeah, it's like it's like okay, well. You know, let's take like a, a fiscal code bill, right? Well, I was fiscal code like is like the, you know, it's, it's one it of the decides vehicles. where you're going, right? right? Right. Well, you know, I was really, I was yeah. really hoping that we'd be able to stop at Cracker Barrel on the way out, but you know, we're, we need to make up time. Um, we're gonna drive okay. through, yeah. or even the whole, the whole entire, the entire, you take the entire budget process. You know, I was really hoping we would go to Arizona for a, uh, a golf trip, but it seems like the family has decided. We're going to go to Orlando, uh, but I get to bring my clubs with me. And everybody else, we're going to go to Disney, and then right. I'll be able to play a little bit. But golf. play golf for a day. Right, yeah. exactly. Not everything I wanted, not the right location, but I still get a little bit of what I want. And, and, then, and then sometimes if the family decides, um, you know, we're going to Maine on a ski trip, and you just say, no. Yeah. <laughs> and that, and, and no, that's no, I don't that, ski. I don't want to ski. There's nothing about that that sounds good to me. And so you will now go on this family trip without me. Or uh, like what happened uh, last year, which was, hey, guess what, everybody? We are going to go to uh, Walt Disney World. Right. And then you show up, and it's, oh, uh, it's a Disney store. Right. right. <laughs> well, it's you close. Sh- yeah. It's, the show up. It's got a. It's got a. It's got a Mickey character kind of. Yeah. On a picture. Yeah. Everybody, no, everybody. that. So so that that does happen sometimes where you yes. show up. You show up to the uh, to the the place like, oh, this is. Or you show up to what online looked like the perfect Airbnb. Yeah. You know, oh, it's just beautiful. And then you show up and it's like shack and stuff's falling off of it. And you're like, I'm not going in there. Yeah, those. That's, I think this is great. I yeah. think you could build an entire way to describe I, this process I, around I used that. to do it a lot when I was explaining the budget to, to people when I was a reporter. And then, tra- you know, training younger reporters or on TV or um, Such you know, a whatever. mentor. Well, but it's. I think it's important where people – as people try to figure out something that's very complex, to 
you know, and this has always been helpful to me in my learning experience, is to say, okay, here's something that I know that you understand uh, and know. Well, and, I, I think, from, something you're familiar. Yeah, with. and I, I think it's the the individual components are not as complex to your average person. Sure. I think what they don't understand is you have a deadline of July 1st. Why can it never seem to be like done on June 15th? Yeah. Like, well, because all the things we described, unlike a family vacation, most of what we described requires pressure. Mm -hmm. It requires people because everybody's coming to this in a, in a in a, in a state government that's divided where you have, you know, different parties in different spots and different priorities. Everybody's coming on June 15th. Everybody was still saying, no, this is what we want. And we're not moving because mm -hmm. they didn't have to until June 26th. So the time element of why can't you guys just get this done before July 1st gets here when every other everybody else does a budget? Because that's not what applies the pressure to actually come up with with solutions that can get votes in all the in all with all parties now if you're if you're kind of one party rule you know I, my guess is it would be a little bit easier but this is this is difficult in split government yeah um, although I can speak from personal experience currently planning a family vacation for later in the year and there is a s s s quite a bit of pressure yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what kind of a vacation are you looking at? Well, it's a, it's a family one. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to air air personal stuff. <laughs> um. <laughs> Maybe we haven't decided. We don't know whether this is Arizona golf or, or Maine. Oh, or no, Maine it's all been skate. decided. It's all been decided. <laughs> yes. and, and you were not, were you at the table? Were you at the uh, negotiating table? I was, I was table? at the table and I was told by leadership how I was voting. <laughs> 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 Everybody who understands politics knows what that means. That's yes. fantastic. Yeah, that, that's good. You were you were instructed. This is how you're going to vote. Yes. Um, look, it, it's 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 that time of year where nerves are kind of on edge. That's the other component that you would throw into it. And and again, people can relate on a family trip or a vacation when you've been in the car for 18 hours with your kids and 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 family. Mm -hmm. Everybody's a little tense. Yeah, right? well, you've been spending four hours waiting in the airport. And then that's right. On the yep, 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 yep. That, the plane goes. That's where we're at right now. Yep. Like everybody's been around each other a lot. There's there's some tension. There's some internal tension. Uh, there's external tension. So, uh, but look, that's the that's the fire that has to build to get the product done. And and I listen. If there was a better way to do it, uh, but this is this is truly how government works. All right. Well, you know that brings up a good uh, topic. Great vacation spots. Have you so, been, what, what's your what's what's some of the top you've been to? Um, that, that's a great. I know question. you're a hardworking guy. You probably don't go on vacation very often. Um, lately, that has that has been the case. But but I'll be honest, because I have a job where I travel a lot, mm -hmm. my vacations the last few years have been what I guess they call them staycations. Yeah, where I actually so I I, I have this little spot outside of my house um, that that you know an awning comes out and it's just a you know table on a patio with a grill and a pool so and it's more of a mental vacation than yeah a, and yeah. honestly I, I totally I, like when i, I go out myself. there each evening and and during a, a a little bit of a time off that's great um so but but i would say i'm really i really look forward to trips with the boys where we're going to uh we, we like to get to ballparks mm -hmm. um minor league ballparks to watch watch baseball one thing that we have always talked about one day, and I don't know if this will ever happen, uh, and I think you know where probably where I'm going with this, is mm -hmm. to take a month in the summer and hit as many baseball stadiums as yeah. we can on one trip. Mm -hmm. Like whether that's a, a West Coast trip and try and swing down and hit like Arizona, Colorado as well, or whether that's a, a trip to the north, you know, the, to Chicago, Minnesota. What there we to do a a a trip where what we call like a baseball ballpark trip um, is on my bucket list. Yeah. I, I, again, I don't know. Maybe the boys now do that when you know I'm 70 well, years old and they're in their 50s. Get, I don't but know. But you get a little but, flavor of you know you get to see the team, then you go to the yeah, city. Yeah. See what, you know you get. It, it's so a so I've not done, to answer your question. I've not done that yet. Yeah. Um, I've I've gone to on vacation and, and seen a ball game. I remember seeing the Miami mm -hmm. you know Miami Marlins uh, when we went to, to South Florida one year. A um, long time ago, uh, you know, trying to get to ballparks. I went to New York, saw the Yankees. But to make a concerted trip where you plan the trip around seeing X amount of baseball stadiums, I'm going to say that's going that's definitely on my bucket list. Well, very good. Well, um, hopefully some of this process will be wrapped up so that everybody out there has summer plans, I know, that uh, they want to do, whether it's sitting on the 
porch taking a little mental vacation or going um, you know, out of state or in state to have a little uh, fun time with family, friends, close ones, or uh, even themselves, maybe we'll be able to get out and do that. And to add, and to add as we close, uh, kind of a mix of that question versus the question you asked before. Yeah. Um, kind of a part, the party music. Yeah. There's also the mental health music. Like, mm-hmm. what music do you sit there and listen to oh. when you're just looking out? And I, I wouldn't have been able to answer that question except that this week, I, I don't know why it hit me, but um, whenever I was kind of in, I, I, I listened to Adele. You can listen to this podcast where all your favorite House Republican podcasts are found. We're available on Apple. We're available on Spotify. And we are available on the YouTubes. Also, www.pahousegop.com slash mypodcast.